Hey guys, my name is Kev and today we're going to be talking about Nintendo Switch emulation on PC. Now, this video is strictly for educational purposes. If you are interested in Nintendo Switch on PC and seeing maybe how your games on your Switch hardware compared to playing it on a high-end gaming PC, that's what this is for, just for educational purposes. Um, so with that said, um, a couple of caveats here. You probably won't do this on a VPN, um, especially if you're going to be downloading ROMs and not dumping them from the console because the Nintendo Ninjas are out there. However, if you are dumping them from your console and I'm copying ROMs from the console, I'm not covering that today, but that is probably going to be the easiest or the, um, the, the safest way to do this. I'm not gonna say the easiest, the safest way to do it. Um, also, they're going to ask you, you're going to need keys, um, just key codes for the switch. I'm not providing those easy Google search. will get you those things. And with that, let's get started. First thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to go to this website here, yuzu-emu.org and click on the download link. Or if you do like I just go straight to downloads, you're going to need to download Microsoft visual C uh, 2022. I already have this installed on my PC, so I'm not gonna do it again. But it's really simple. Well, I'll do it again just for the sake of showing you guys how to do it. It really is a simple open, and it's probably gonna tell me I already have it. Agree to the terms, install. Give it a moment. And it will install on its own. There we go, so you guys can see what I'm doing. Um, and you see it'll just, it'll install here. While we're having that going, you can install with Linux. This is perfectly workable with Linux. If you're using a Steam Deck, this is the version you're gonna to wanna to be using because the Steam Deck runs on Linux. However, today we're gonna to be running on Windows. So while C++ is installing, I'm gonna go ahead and download for Windows. We'll allow this guy to finish installing. Okay, and for the next step, we're gonna go ahead and install Yuzu. We already have the C++ installed. So we're gonna go open file and user early access, unless you are part of their Patreon, you don't even have access to this. So for most users, you're just gonna go ahead and install regular Yuzu and you're gonna create a desktop icon. So go ahead and install. They're gonna remind you Yuzu is an experimental emulator and sometimes things will break. I actually have found this, I use a lot of different emulators and I find this to actually be the probably best one, the most consistent one. So we've installed it, we're gonna go ahead and exit. And now we are inside Yuzu. Now, I've already had Yuzu set up before, so it automatically found my games. Um, and on the first time that you open it, it's going to give you a pop-up where it's gonna ask for a prod key. So, first things first, I'm not gonna give you the prod key. Um, that is something you can pull from your own Nintendo Switch. There is documentation on the Yuzu website as well for how to get and download all the files that you need from your Nintendo Switch. Or if you're clever and you understand how to use Google, these are easily found on Google as well. So what you're gonna wanna do, you're gonna go into your file explorer. You're going to go to your user, your name, app data, roaming, Yuzu, and then keys. This is the key that I said I'm not gonna provide for you guys. This is what can get me in trouble. You can either pull it from your Nintendo Switch, that's the safest route, or if you're pretty good with Google, I would say just download it, just find it on Google, they're really easy to find. Drop it in there. Now, once you have that set up, you're gonna to go to come back to your um, Yuzu, you're gonna hit add new game directory, you'll double click that, and then you're gonna to go to your folder where you have all your game ROMs. I have mine saved under a folder called Switch ROMs. Select folder and it'll pull in all of your games. From there, you're gonna to wanna to go into um, emulation and then configure. And this is where you're gonna actually configure the emulator. For a lot of this stuff, you're just going to leave it on the default settings. This stuff, leave it on, leave it on default, all of this under general, leave it all under default. System, again, you'll probably want a stereo output unless you have a multi-output uh, sound system. Region, leave it on your country, leave it on your language of choice. It'll automatically do the time zone that you use with Windows. CPU, I again, leave that on auto. You can do these other options here, but leave it on auto, it'll be fine. And then when you go into graphics, here's the important one here. For API, I generally recommend Vulkan. Vulkan, for most games on this emulator, runs so much better than OpenGL. You can use OpenGL in a pinch. Some games do only run really well on OpenGL, but I would say 95% of them. Like I can't even think of a game that really needs OpenGL off the top of my head. 
Most games on this emulator run really badly on OpenGL, and they run really, really well on Vulkan for the most part. So I strongly welcome, recommend you use Vulkan. For the device, uh, this is gonna be your graphics card or your integrated graphics, APU, whatever. And again, this is what's gonna determine your performance in the emulator. If you're on integrated graphics or a really old PC, your mileage may vary on this emulator. Um, it's not a super power hungry emulator from my experience, but I also have a really fairly high end graphics card. So there's that. These other settings, again, leave them as they are. Full screen mode, I like exclusive full screen, but you can also go borderless window. It's really up to you. Uh, NVEC, um, or NV deck emulation. Again, I just left it at default. I don't, I'm not sure, 100% sure, sure what that does. Uh, aspect ratio, default 16 by nine. I can't think of any 21 or four by three games that are out here right now. You could stretch to, one, to 21 by nine, but I don't think it looks very good. There are mods out there you can use to actually get native 21 by nine if you want that if you have an ultra wide monitor but for the most part leave it a 16 by nine most of you are going to be a 16 by nine that is the standard for the resolution just drop down to whatever your machine can handle the app will default to 720p i'm running at uh, 1440p my monitor is 1440p i could even probably i could even get away from these games at 4k but again i'm on a 1440p monitor so i use 1440p windows adapt and filter um, scale force, these just leave it at the default one, honestly. Um, it doesn't really matter there. Anti aliasing, you can only really use FXAA, which FXAA isn't amazing, but it's what they offer here. In advanced, again, leave it alone. Just, um, enter, except for your anisotropic filtering, throw that at 16x, doesn't cost anything, makes the game look a little bit better, and it uses almost no performance. Audio, leave it at auto, leave it alone. And then for the controls. For the controls, it gets a little, it can be a little complex because this is a hybrid console. For the most part, I would say either to, uh, make the choice early, do you want to have this set up as a pro controller? Do you want to use it as a dual Joy-Cons, either Joy-Con, or do you want to have it in handheld mode? I use it as a pro controller. Um, sometimes I'll go through and just use it as a handheld, especially if you want to play, say, Pokemon um, Let's Go. This is clutch for Pokemon Let's Go because since you um, can't, unless you want to use a single Joy-Con, this is one of the reasons I looked into Yuzu because I wanted to be able to play it on a regular controller. I use my Xbox controller and this is the screen that allows you to do that. So the setup for every kind of controller is basically about the same is you just pick your controller types. Right now we're going to do a pro controller just because that's what I've set up. It's going to see input device. I, I prefer to just say any, you can save the profile, and then it's just a matter of what do you want each button to do. So the left stick, you click it, and then you move your, and it's gonna tell you, hey, if you, for example, if you wanna make your left stick go up, you have to press the one that goes up on your left stick. So that's what I did, and now it goes up on the screen. Now, like I said, I already have this set up for all the others, so it's not a big deal, that's why it's going in all directions. I'm not gonna do these other ones, I just want to do it as an example. The left bumper left trigger, I have the minus set up, and it's all pretty simple. Um, now you can use, now what I also do, I the I don't like that I get the prompts with the wrong button. So my A matches my A, my B matches my B. Now, and I'm weird that way. I know a lot of people will make it match up where it lines up on the actual switch. I choose not to do that. Um, yeah, that's basically setting up your controller right there. And then you can also choose if you want to have it in a docked mode or undocked mode. Generally, leave it in docked mode. It doesn't matter as much um, if you are um, not using the this mode. And then after that, you really just turn it on and play some games. So if we go from here, I'm just going to open up Donkey Kong Country Tropical Freeze. Give it a second to load. And there it is. You're not going to get any game audio here um, just because I didn't prepare for that for this video. Just kind of winging it there. We'll give it a second to load. And boom, there it is. You can see how my save is there. And all you see is coming locally. I hit the wrong button. See, it already sees me on a handheld mode. I can play as DK. And we in there. And just to prove I'm not doing any kind of trickery. I should be able to also pull up. There we go. 
60 frames per second. Don't kind of trench tropical freeze. And we're playing it, and there's my um, afterburner. And it's playing on my PC. It's really that simple. Uh, like I said, the hardest part of this is probably finding the, um, there it is. Like I said, we're playing. We're in there. In there, let's win more. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Of course, if you're new to my channel, love to have you subscribe, share with a friend, and I'll talk to you guys next time. Thanks for watching.